Hi all, welcome to another Dave Downey Fly Tying video production where I'll be tying all my favourite patterns for you guys around the world so it makes it easier for you to tie these patterns and also makes it more enjoyable when you're catching lots of fish on them so all the flies that I'm actually tying I do use them myself eh, or I have used them in the past some are old patterns, some are new patterns at the end of each of the videos I'll have a wee list of materials that you can purchase from my store if you like to tie the killer patterns or you can buy the flies direct I do tie the flies, I tie them, I don't get them imported from anywhere uh, it's actually myself that ties them there is a bit of a lead time on them but that's the way it is because uh, I can't, you know, it's just me so no problem so I hope you really enjoy the videos and I hope you like them and as I say, don't forget to hit the subscribe or hit the notification bell button uh, that way you'll get the videos as soon as they come out uh, and, and you know, it's appreciated that you can, that you're actually subscribing, you know. Uh, I'm on a bit of a push just now, I'm trying to get my subscribers up to 5,000, and obviously we'll see where we go from there. Sitting at 725,000 views just now, I would like to get to up to a million, that would make me happy. Uh, might even run a wee competition if I get to a million. So, I hope you enjoy the videos, I hope you will pass it on to your fellow anglers, uh, so that they can enjoy it. And I really want feedback, I want feedback on the patterns, please stick, stick some comments in, you know, uh, tell me what you want to see and also I want to see you catching fish so I would like it if you were to, you know, tell me what you're catching you know, I do get some subscribers coming back telling me yeah I catch this, catch that which is great but you know, there's a lot of guys watching these videos so I would like to get some feedback so anyway, but today what I'm going to be tying is the humongous or shuggy as we call it. I'm not going to get into the history, there is an older video, I'm doing a more up to date video, there is an older video uh, on my YouTube that you can go and read back if you want to find out about the history. I will give you a couple of wee stories as I'm tying it, but quickly off the bat I'm going to show you the very first shuggy that I ever got. So there it is there, copper wire, black body, olive hackle, black tail, silver flash on the top of the very small chain eyes. You look at the difference in size of the chain eyes. So what I've got, what you're going to need to tie this is I'm using Kamasan 175s. It's actually an 8, it's in the vise. That's a size 10, but I have been tying some 10s as well. So it is an 8, it's in the vise. I've got some toilet chain. Right, that's about 4 mil. Now you can't I used to get it out of B and Q by the meter, but I don't sell it in B and Q anymore. So I just order it off Amazon. So you're looking for about 3.84 mil. Using some gold wire. Now I'm using the uh, uni wire just now until the spool's finished as you can see. Then I'll just use the veneer stuff. It's cheaper uh, and you know and it does the same job. My gold humongous chenille, try to get it into focus there. Right. I really need to move this other video, uh, other monitor, so I'm not looking to the side all the time. Six mil gold humongous chenille. This is for the gold one, right? Now we're, I'm got, the silver ones just replace the flash with silver flash and replace the, the, the chenille with, with silver chenille. Black marabou, important. And I like these little feathers for tying the humongous because I can get one or two flies and then I'm left with a tip to tie a cormorant. Uh, I do put, I don't really sell them in, the, in my bags but I do put them at the back of the bags. We're going to need some flat gold for the tail. The right. reason I've got that already cut is because I've been tying, I tie them in batches so instead of doing one hook at a time I do a batch so I'll have a dozen, so I'll, I'll get a dozen flies out of one hank. The uh, thread I'm using today is just 140 UTC because it's quite a big fly and there's not a lot of wraps involved, there's not a lot of materials, it's not complicated so I'm using 140 which is quite thick. And the last thing, uh, obviously we need some super glue. I'm using the fully mill stuff just for on the chain eyes. This one, I've all, if, if you see there, I've already what finished. So as I say, I do it in bulk. I tend to do like 30 of these at a time, maybe 50, maybe 100, depending. And I'll just leave them sitting like that. Then I can put silver flash or I can put gold flash on it. It's really up to yourself. But the big contentious point for me on a humongous, and a lot of people keep saying, oh, blah, 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 it's a grizzle hackle. It's not a grizzle hackle. It never has been a grizzle hackle. It's actually this type of hackle, which is like, really soft Chinese chinchilla type. I got them from Rutland years ago and they were called chinchilla. It's Gordon Griffiths used to sell them. Don't really get them anymore. I'm going to show you different capes so you can see different varieties. You know, but they are also a you know, Cree, bad Crees that 
and I'm going to plug somewhere else just now, to be quite honest, because I'm always getting asked about getting these capes. I don't, I don't get them myself to sell because uh, you know it's just too much hassle bringing them in and getting the certificates and stuff. But you can get these capes. The Glasgow Angling Centre actually sell quite good ones, and I think they're under a tenner, and you'll get a lot of humonguses out here. You know, and they are under a tenner, and it's their own still water make or whatever. Uh, but if you go along, I'll even tell you where they are. They're at the top right hand side of the shelf, uh, on 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 the wall at the capes. Uh, and as I say, is that just look for some sort of honey done barred, almost like a bad cree. Right, so we're just going to tie the thread in. So that's us got the thread in. So we'll take it back to the bend, then we'll come back up to the middle. As I said, I've been doing, you know. Uh, these in bulk, so I've actually sat and done a two dozen and got them ready because I'm actually going to Loch Leven tomorrow, which I haven't fished for ages. So I'm, I, you know, I can't go to Loch Leven without having some humonguses. So obviously, I would, I, I would have that ready for another fly. Now the tail's about two and a half, three inches long. It's up to you how long you want to make it. With the marabou, what we're going to do is we're just going to cut it. So I'm going to cut. That's probably about almost two inches as well so I keep it on a stock this is a good thing with the two the, the, the two cameras you can now see what I do because this camera tends to just zoom in on the hook but with the two cameras albeit the downside is you get to see my ugly mug but you get to see me doing what I do with the, the feathers so I catch it in between these two fingers and I push it and I just give it a quick rip don't cut it Marabou looks terrible when it's cut so, same again, fingers, then cut. And what you'll find is, once you get into the swing of it, and once you've done a pile of tails, you know, if you sit and do, say, 50, you're not going to go through 50 humonguses, but you never know, because the pike like them as well. So, if you sit and do 50 of these, it's so fast when you're just chucking a tail on it, putting a body on it, you know. It really is a lot quicker than, than, than sitting one at a time, one at a time, one at a time. It's just being like a chef, you know, the prep works the best. If you do the prep work then you get the result at the end. So just catch the salt, uh, gold wiring and I'll just tidy that up a little bit. Right, don't worry too much if it's not, if it's stepping the way that is there, you know, see the way it goes down. Don't worry too much because you can do like a double double thing with the chenille. Then we'll just get the chenille, goldy chenille. I've, I've been selling this stuff for 20 years and I love it. Uh, and it just, I don't know, I've tried other chenilles and they're not as good. So i just start wrapping it. Now, some people ask why I'm using silver eyes on a gold humongous, because I always have done and I've never changed and I don't see that the gold eyes would make a difference. I actually think it breaks the fly up a wee bit more. Now, it, I could tell you tons of stories about the humongous. Absolutely tons. But this is my bob fly. So I'm fishing this on a three fly cast. I'll have a natural pattern in the middle, something like a claret hopper. Uh, I'll have the silver humongous on the point, and I'll have a gold humongous on the dropper. And the amount of times I've lifted up on a hang, and just held it there and watch big fish coming up and look at that and they'll mouth it maybe they'll grab it and then you just wait and the fish will disappear and go drop down again and you're just waiting 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 now remember your other humongous is some i'll be at least 12 13 14 feet away next minute it just goes doot, 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 bang and that's you you're in and the fishes went down to its silver one and, and it, it works all the time you know it's it's such a good fly so I'm going to get quite a big hackle here, right, so look at that hackle, look at the length of that, it's, it looks great on the camera, and to be quite honest, it's the softness, and don't worry if it's pure white at the front, I, I, I don't mind it being white at the front, so I'm just going to catch this in, I'll tell you a wee story about when I was on Rutland, fishing the Rutland pairs, and I was out with this famous angler called Dave Doherty, curly as most people call him, absolutely brilliant guy, uh, one of the most laid back guys I've ever known, 
and it, it really is fantastic and he's a brilliant angler fish with the ruttling comments with dave shipman and all the other crew uh, so fantastic angler but a guide on rutland and he was my boat partner for the rutland pairs rutland pairs is the you, you both guys go out together it's a 16 fish limit for the boat so it doesn't matter if dave caught the 16 or i caught the 16 but it, it was 16 combined and we went round the back of the yacht club so I'm just going to wrap that round, and you can see it's a cracking big hackle, but we're not going to put tons on it. Oh. So I'm only wanting four turns of hackle. So I'm just pulling that out a wee bit. A day, day when we went round the back of the sailing club because it was fry bashing time. It was the end of the season, October. Uh, and I went down with my pal Lindsay Barry and uh, Eck Edie, and, and, and you know, they were in, in their boat. And, and I was out with Dave Doherty. So we goes out and, and we goes round the back of the, the yacht club. We're in among the yachts. And there is an odd fish smacking the fry. So just pull the hackle fibers back and catch that in. And and Dave's Dave's fishing the, the suspender minky. And he's getting an odd offer and he's getting an odd fish coming up and you know they're mouthing it and they're, they're, they're and he's asked me to fish the tube fly, which I don't really like. I really don't like fishing the tube fly. Uh, but I was fishing it anyway, and I, I got one brown trout on the tube fly, and, and I put it back, because, you know, down there you can kill it, but to me, being Scottish, it's out of season, because it was after October 6th, and just pull that back. So I'm fishing the tube fly, getting the odd offer, uh, gets a one fish, puts that back, and I says to Dave, this is crap, I'm going to do something different. I says, what, wait till you see this, and I put on two humonguses, or shuggies as we call them, Stuck them on, he's like, what the hell are they? Stuck them on, first cast, right, cast right under the, the platform where the boats would come in. Two strips, bang, five pounder. Let's just say, at the end of the day, it was Dave Doherty's favourite fly and his top fly. Uh, I had 16 fish that day and Dave had one. So, yeah, it works. And I know to this day he's still using it and it still works. Uh, it's an amazing pattern, I've used it on the big locks and corrib and I've been pulled up by some of the Irish boys for using it because it's not a fly, so they say. So just do your wet finish as normal. I always do too. But you see how, how fast it was to tie that and it was all in the prep work. Once you've got the tail and the eyes done, it's dead easy. And just a bit of varnish on the thread, pull it in. But honestly, if I was stuck on a desert island, whether it be salt water, fresh water, whatever, this is a fly I would have. Uh, I've had customers buy it for bonefish, caught salmon on it, sea trout, caught loads of fish on it. But I've done really well in Loch Leven with it. It really is, honestly. And people say, oh, brown trout will not eat that. Well, they ate it big time on Corrib. They, they absolutely munched it. The last time I was on Loch Leven, though, it was the pike that were eating it. So, that's a humongous. As I said, get yourself some of these capes. Cheap. Chinchilla, they are, they are the best capes for this fly. Uh, you need decent marabou, and everybody kind of knows that I've got the best. Mm, shouldn't really say that in my video, but I will, because I'm proud of it, and I work really hard to get it the way it is. Chain Eyes, Amazon, if you need a link. If you need links for any of these things that I don't sell, just give me a holler, send me a message, and I'll, 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 I'll happily give you a link to where to get the right stuff and that's it and it's the proportions of the fly you know this soft hackle compresses so it goes when you pull it and then it opens up so it's long slow pulls everybody thinks it's really fast big pulls but it isn't it's long slow pulls so the fly goes and you know it is a kind of derivative of a frog nobbler at the end of the day so if I was to say anything I would say I think it was Sid Knight that invented the frog nobbler it's basically a, an adaptation of his pattern at the end of the day. But it's the colour combinations. Gold and black, silver and black, and I like sunburst tail and gold. That's a really good fly as well. And in the start of the year, a black and green one. But I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you're going to give it a bit of view time. And you're going to get some of your pals to come and a wee look at it. But it is a proper humongous, shuggy, whatever you want to call it. It's tied with the right materials. And, you know, it's... One of the flies that I kind of got made with. Everybody knows me about it. So, yeah. 
it's one of my favourite flies. It isn't easy to cast, if you can't cast two of them, just cast the one. But the gold one tends to work better on sunny days, and the silver one works better on dull days. So keep that in mind. But as I say, I fish them, I call it a tag team, I fish them together. So as I say, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, you can follow me on my Facebook, which is David C Downey. Follow me on my Instagram, Dave Downey Fly Fishing. Uh, you'll get me at my, my online store, which is www.fly-fishingworld.com, and my online uh, guiding uh, site is www.davedowneyfishing.com. So have a good day. Remember to subscribe. Remember to hit the thumbs up. All these thumbs up make me happy, and I, I love answering questions. So don't be scared, and don't be scared to to, to share the videos. So take take care. Enjoy your fishing. I know the season's nearly finished, but it'll soon be grilling time, so I'll start doing more river stuff on the video. Alright, take care people. Enjoy yourselves. Bye-bye.